Welcome to the Mystical Motherhood Podcast. This is Chelsea, and I want you to create a happy family. I use my background in Western and Eastern medicine, birth, and ancient yogic practices to help the modern mother learn how to live a healthier life and create conscious children. This is your guide to fertility, conception, pregnancy, birth, postpartum, and the early childhood years. Are you ready to live the life of your dreams? Welcome back to Mystical Motherhood's episode number 17. I'm so excited that you're here this week. Katerina and I dive deep into how spiritual change can actually physically change your body, even your menstrual cycle. We speak about the time of conception and I take her through an amazing meditation of what really happens within your body at the time of conception and how sacred geometry is related to this moment in time. I have her engage each of her senses so that she understands what her current frequency is so that if she were to conceive a child, she would know what type of child she would attract. If you enjoy this podcast, please leave a review, tell your friends, share this on social media, and subscribe below. Thank you for your support. Hey, how are you doing this week? Good. How are you? Good. So tell me anything that's new that's coming up for you physically, mentally, or emotionally. Um, Basically, the new thing um, was, I think is amazing, was my period, um, my last, um, you know, my last month. Usually my periods are intense with cramps. Like I have a lot of intense cramping for a full, like a like a day before it's a little bit and I can do it. And then once my period fully comes, it's like, it takes my breath away. And I usually have to take like all this medicine and it's just like, I'm in like a horrible feeling and just the state. And I just don't want to be around anybody. So this time I was really surprised. I had like zero pain and my period wasn't, usually it's a little more heavier, and I've noticed, um, you know, the coloring is a little different. It's a little more brighter and more like more vibrant. If that's, that's a, like, you know, odd way to experience to explain it, but literally I was shocked. I was like, Oh my God, I have no cramps. I have no pain. And my period was just like, it was normal, mm. you know, for once. That's awesome. So That's just showing you that, I mean, it's showing you that the work you've done is happening within your body. It's proof of the pudding. So a a lot of times people have a really hard time with spiritual work or paying for it or not, um, because they can't see what happens. They like to have a concrete thing. Like I get this medication and then my strep throat goes away or, um, something like that. But what the spiritual work does is it's clearing you from the inside and creating a vibration and it's clearing out the density within the womb, which there's no more pain left. And Eckhart totally talks about this in new earth that a woman holds the pain body. So the pain body is through all the generations. And if you start to clear it, you no longer have that pain body within you. And so the pain body, that's why, what, where the cramps come from. It's not normal for us to have, physical menstrual cramps and it's actually it's almost the wounding of the feminine on the planet wow it's not i mean why would something that's supposed to be a normal bodily process hurt why would that make that happen it doesn't make any sense right i've never had a period without hurt And, and most women don't right and it's related to so much more than what they think and so that's why when you do this work of clearing the womb and of clearing, you know, your body out, the physical, mental, emotional parts, you're going to, you're going to physically change. And that's what, you know, when I yeah. talk about the DNA that you can change your DNA, you're changing your cells. You're actually right. changing the energetics of your cells and you're seeing it with like the color it would be. So eating vibrant foods and, and thinking vibrant thoughts and, 
you know, working on the spiritual realm is going to physically change everything in your life. And it happened with me too. I remember when I was doing a work with a woman years ago, years and years ago, I never had another painful period. I mean, occasionally here and there I do, but it's often related to the spiritual work I'm doing. I know that something's coming through me to be birthed. Right. Yeah, no, I was just like, it was, it was one of the most like, it was just usually with my periods, I'm just like dreading it and dreading it. And I'm just like, oh, here we go again. Here we go again. And then this time it was just like a very, it was just like a very easy process, you know? It yeah, and that's what it should be. And it should be right. a light experience. You know, it should be a balanced experience. It should be, a, you know, a couple of two to three days and it's over, no pain. Yeah. And then yeah. that's I it. Like, I was like, oh my God, I've never, it only took 32 years, but I, you know. Yeah. And it may come back again, but then you just know that you're releasing something. So for right. example, this weekend, I, I had a lot of information come in for my book, my new right. book. Right. And it, while I was receiving the information, I began to cramp, like um, physically cramp, but it's because right. it was like, sometimes when you receive information, you know, this is, this is way next spiritual level, but sometimes when you receive information that the divine wants to birth it through you. And so oh. as the feminine, if you're not pregnant, they'll often place it within the womb. I see. Because it's a place of, it's almost the same right. energy of the void. And so you will birth this new reality through you. And so uh, it's the place uh, of creativity. So when I work with clients that have fibroid problems or growths in the uterus, it's, it has to do with relationship issues that haven't been healed. It has to do with cre- lack of creativity in your life, not feeling connected to something bigger than yourself. Um, so much, so many details to it. So that's why those overgrowths happen in that area because they haven't been healed. Those different, um, emotional and physical things, right? Wow. Does that make yeah. sense? It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. But people don't understand that. And then a doctor will say, let's just take out your organs yeah. <laughs> and I've had yeah. that have come to me and actually, you know, said, I've had a hysterectomy. And I said, well, did anybody heal what happened before the hysterectomy? Did anybody hear, heal the abuse you went through? Did anybody heal even ask you about that? And none. So what's happened in our society of, is we're, we, we've gone to as that, the fact that a hysterectomy is a common procedure. I know. And it yeah. shouldn't be because it doesn't heal the, un- I mean, if in some cases it's necessary, right. But it doesn't heal the underlying problems, which are on right. the spiritual level. And Cause they're the still body. really there. They're still really there. And that's the mind body connection. That's that. Uh, yeah. No, no. Cool? It's really that's- cool when you can practically see it and experience it because you're like, Whoa, this works. But People often don't want to take the time and energy to even get to that point. Well, I think it's the time. I think it's yeah. it, it's the time and energy. And I think you have to be in the right mindset. And we kind of talked about this like earlier, but like, it's, I think our society is just, we're so like, I think we're so clouded and we only see one way. And all we want is the fastest route to whatever we want. But it isn't the fastest route because people will spend, you know, entire lifetimes being brutally sick Mm -hmm. and depressed. And so, Mm -hmm. so when it comes to, I have clients that are having, you know, severe depression and they won't even do a three minute meditation. That seems too much to them, but they'd rather be in pain the whole day. Yeah. And so it's, I remember I saw like a little thing from Gabrielle Bernstein, Bernstein on her social media. And it was like, would you want to feel like think shit every day or do you want or do you you know or do you want to do something that will just help you for 20 minutes exactly yeah it's because people are self-sabotagers and Mm -hmm. they would rather remain unconscious than in pain and and in pain than to actually face themselves in the mirror because the way you heal is by looking at yourself and that's what Ram Dass talks about in all of his poetry. And that's what Rumi's yeah. speaking about. Rumi's just speaking about the mirror of himself. Yes. Which is, which connects you. And once you clean the mirror of your perception, which is looking at yourself, which is just a figure of God, you actually see God everywhere. Right. Because there's makes, no separation. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. it does. Because yeah, it's true. 
you're right because all the shit that you have like you 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 know it but literally you know the road it's going to take to like fix it and people like you're right people just want these the way the whatever they're like you know what this is fine i'll just deal with this and it's just you know i'll just keep going with it every day and you see it every day you see it with well especially you know in work and in just general with my friends too and i see it and i'm just like at this point you know it's like you want to help and you want to say something but i'm like you're not you know you don't want it so You know, I have a quote I'd like to read you. I met this woman this weekend, not by coincidence, and she worked with St. Michael. And she's pretty phenomenal. And she said this to me in my face. She said, let me find it. Okay. She said, this is words from St. Michael. Speak only to those whom you know to be your soul group. The rest give them love and move on. Know the truth. So what that means, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. So I'll say it again. Speak only to those whom you know to be of your soul group. The rest give them love and move on. Know the truth. So what this means is, and this is good for you to know is, and anyone who's listening, as you go through the process of awakening to this larger universe, the synchronicities and the spiritual growth becomes almost uncomprehendable to most people and individuals. And so I found myself, this is my personal experience. Yeah. I have found myself over the years trying to pull others. I mean, I can think of specific names, gosh, yank them to Mm -hmm. help them understand what's going on with me so that they could almost keep up with me. Right. I mean, I mean, to the point that I'm hurting myself, yeah. And, and I'm, and cause I want them to be at my level. I want them to understand. I want them to have some sort of, you know, I do it even now with my husband and he doesn't have an, he has no idea what I'm talking about. Right. And so like, for an example of this would be, you know, explaining the synchronicities that happened in my life or just this magnificent events or the things I see, you know, and he doesn't, he doesn't understand what I found is over time is that if a magnificent event happened to me, which they will happen to you more and more. Mm -hmm. And I tried to tell people they didn't understand. And I almost lost my power by trying to make them understand. Yes. And by trying to have them keep up, you almost give away your energy. Yeah. Do you agree with that? Yeah. (laughs) And so part of the process of, you know, awakening is actually... It's a, it's a very isolating process because it's you looking at you while it's happening. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Know? That makes a lot of sense. So sometimes if you're going through it, try to find people that you can try to find that soul family group, which would be people that you immediately see and you're like, I'm your friend and, and they just understand you and they'll come and you'll start to, they'll, you'll start to find them. The more you, you know, become who you really are, they're just going to be attracted to you because they're doing the same process. And those are the people that you work these sort of things out with. Okay. And those are the people you share your process with or other people that are healers. Right, right, right. Right. right? So, but with the people that don't understand, I've learned through trial and error just to not, or through trial and error, trust me, it's not worth the time or energy because they don't, yeah. don't want to hear I, it. Right. And I feel like I went through that too. And it was just like me because like, my you know basically just like telling my friends of like this is what you need to do this is what's going on this is this and for them like I obviously I finally noticed after several different like tries and like you know big tries and I'm just like they just they don't care not that they don't care it's just that they're nowhere near the mindset of being where they you know where I'm going they just you know they're still back here so um, yeah. so I learned that the hard way too. And I was just like, you know what? I mean, it's fine. You know, it is what it is. Yeah. But that's also how evolution works. It, it, I mean, what, you know, as I'm re, re as I'm writing this book, I see who it's going to hit on earth. And, right. and, it, and I, and you know, as I've written these, you know, mystical motherhood and, and the next book I'm creating fertile, I, 
people are saying, you know, how much marketing are you going to do? What are you going to do to put it out there? And I know, and I trust that the people it's supposed to get to, it's absolutely going to get to them. So it's really not about numbers and it's not about um, quantity. It's about quality. Right. And so I'm t- I wanted to bring this up because evolution, if everyone on this earth were to, you know, rise up and awaken at the same time, there would be no such thing as evolution. <laughs> and so does that make sense? So, so what we have to do is the ones that are supposed to awaken, they're going to awaken the way they're going to do it. And they're, you know, that's, how the world will change. And then those children will awaken more and then it can happen at a faster process, which will happen, I believe. But that's not our decision of when that evolution should occur. Right. Exactly. And it only hurts you by, I mean, because I know you're having friends that your doors are being slammed on you. And, and in a way, I mean, what they're showing me is as these people are slamming doors on you, it almost creates this beautiful, um, kind of geometric shape of all these doors around you. And you're like, this is okay. And because it shoots you directly up to heaven. I was just going to say, like, I'm actually not that upset about. No, yeah, you're fine with it. It's (laughs) kind of like you laugh. I mean, that's what they're showing me is that, you know, they, let's say there's six doors around you, you know, yeah. And your mom closes it and everybody closes it. But what that does is it separates you from that type of energy of, the, yeah. of these people, because it's, it's, there's many, many quotes on it. Hang out with the people that you want to emulate yeah. or be around. I mean, if you want to be successful in business, go and be at business conferences. Exactly. If you want to be successful in you know, becoming spiritually awakened, go and be around those type of people. Right. No, that makes a lot of sense, but yeah, to, that's, you know, very true to your point some of the relationships that are like shifting with me and like going, you know, kind of just separating. I'm very okay with it. Yeah. Like it's not hurting me. I'm just like, I'm okay. Like this is actually a very good cleansing experience for me. And, and then it's just like that energy is when one door closes, you know, shuts, another one opens. And so what this is, all these doors are shutting, but what it does is it creates a vacuum to the universe. Yeah. Because then it's only you. Yep. And you kind of need to go inside when you're going through this type of process because and need that time alone because then it connects you with who you really are, which is above. Exactly. It's really cool, yeah. right? No, I, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, that this is the best thing ever. I'm like, I've so before I used to be so, so, so afraid of like losing like like I wasn't married, but like losing a boyfriend or losing friends. And like, you know, if anything, like I was, you know, I was thinking like, what would I do on the weekends? Like, who would I hang out with? Like, what would I, where would I go? And now I'm just like, actually, okay. Like, I just, I want to stay by myself on a weekend. I'm like, if everybody left me, it'd be okay. You know? Right. (laughs) You just want to be alone more. (laughs) But, you know, also just, this is a side note. It may not be in your case, but I found it for my case is I did when, as I was doing research for my books, attachment, I believe is, you know, we have this attachment to the the world around us and we, we, you know, are constantly needing a person, which would be a physical relationship or an object or, you know, material object and look at the whole world. I have, I have the theory that it's, highly connected to our relationship and attachment to our mother during, during the, the womb time, you know, during gestation and also after birth, because I know none of our mothers really bonded with us on a physical, you know, on a spiritual and mental level while in the womb, which in other planets, I'm sure out there they do. And right. so that's a level of bonding that no one pretty much across the, you, the world has ever gotten, which is what I teach in mystical motherhood. Then right. afterwards, many of the babies been taken away and they weren't, you know, held at the chest for 40 days. And because of that, we don't have the same level of bondings the ancient tribes would have. I don't believe this is my theory mm. and probably other people's theories, but I, it, it affects us as we grow older, because we're constantly needing to be with other people yeah. because we never got that mother bond. So we look for the bond and everything else around us to fulfill that need to belong. I see. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I mean, right or wrong, 
it could, if we don't, we can't test these kind of things. All we can do is test it on our children and yeah. take, you know, and just say, well, why not try? Right. It exactly. take that much energy, which is the talking to the child and then the, the bonding after the child's born. Right. Right. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Which I feel like, well, getting to your book right now, it's just like, why wouldn't you associate like your child already growing in your womb? Like, why wouldn't you make the connection already? You know, I don't, cause we're not conscious because <laughs> we're not conscious because it makes we, a lot of sense. It's like, well, of course, something's growing inside of you. It's living in you and breathing through you. So yeah. you're living it life already. He can, he, you know, it can hear you. It can, it's connected to source, which you're connected to source, but you've just forgotten. I mean, the womb is still, though, if you think about what the womb is and what I'm under now understanding now with sacred geometry and with my next book is that the womb is just the void. The child is still almost, it's like it's being created in two different realities. Hmm. And so you're, that, that's why when a woman, you know, when a woman, a woman may feel super creative or, you know, yeah. ins- incredibly inspired when they're pregnant is because they're directly created the source. Huh. And a lot, most women do right after the child comes in at around four months, they have an, you know, an excess of energy. And some women say it's the best they've ever felt. It's because yeah. they feel God again. God's wow. back with them because they've forgotten who they were. And then the baby comes out and then it all goes to hell. But, <laughs> but it's a, if you think about it like that, it's really cool. Okay. So is there any other things you want to go over and I'll take you through this meditation? Um, no, that was that. I want to tell you about that. <laughs> Cause I was really happy about that. <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> Perfect. Um, okay. Do I need to lie down? Yeah. And if anyone's listening, you can just, kind of visualize this in your mind or you can lie down if you're listening. Yeah. I was, re- I was given this um, over the weekend and I will try to, to explain it as best I can. And it is a meditation or an understanding of what happens at conception and it will help you to understand your current frequency and all of, you know, the senses that you are currently holding so that you can actually change them before you have your baby and and during pregnancy. Okay. So I want you to just take three deep, deep breaths into your abdomen and ground your body to the earth. Ground your body to the deep into the core of the earth and then connect up into the heavens too and make sure that you're in your heart okay. and connected to the all. <clears throat> and I want you to imagine yourself either in your bedroom, probably in your bedroom, or you, if you're lying down on the couch or even if you're standing just in your mind's eye, you know, you're in your bedroom And I want you to believe and picture that you're alone. You're not with your partner because immaculate conception actually happens alone, right? So this would be like an experience of immaculate conception. So you're alone in your bedroom and you're lying down and this light comes through the corner of the room, almost at an angle to your womb, similar to a light that would come, you know, in those beautiful Renaissance paintings where God is, is actually coming in through the room. And I want you to see it slowly drift in. Okay. And then I want you to remember, and we'll talk about it after as we go throughout, just remember all the questions that um, all the answers you get to the questions as I ask them in your mind's eye. So you see this light drifting in, And perhaps a dove appears as it moves through the room. It maybe it's a different animal. If it is, note what that is. And then look at the consistency and the color of this light. Is there sparkles in it? If you put your fingers through it, is it thick? If you were to, um, is it cloudy or is it incredibly translucent? Are Are there any colors to it? 
and watch it slowly come down because this is pure consciousness moving towards your womb. And again, this is what they explained to me is what happens at conception. So then about six to 12 inches above your womb as you're lying there and, you know, there's the sun drifting in and it's just, you're in a completely peaceful moment. Six to 12 inches, this energy of, from spirit just stops above your womb. And it almost takes a, a pause, which is a half a second, a second, but enough that you notice it. And within a, like all time and space, the fastest it can move, similar to an arrow hitting a target, it goes directly into your womb at the speed of light. And upon hitting your womb, it's, it's almost like light hits the darkness. It would be like if you were to see an eye, a beautiful eye of consciousness, like the third eye forming. That is is the darkness. And when it penetrates, it creates light that spreads out in all directions, almost the six directions of, of, of the world. And these are long linear tubes of light. Can you see those? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when that happens, a noise is created and this noise is created across the cosmos. So it's happening within your womb, but because your womb and your body is within the cosmos, all the angels and the beings across the entire, you know, time and space and universe can he hear this sound. I want you to, in your mind's eye and in your, in your, in your ears, hear the sound frequency and tone that's specific to you at this moment in time. Now, it may be a deep vibration. It may be a long ohm. It may have an ohm ra. It may have an ohm sa. Something like that. I want you to feel whatever that is for you in this moment. It's the first sound you hear. Every answer is the first answer you get. Okay. And remember that answer. Because the sound frequency, I'll explain why all this is important after we go through this. So all of this light is exploding. So it's somewhat similar to the look of an atomic bomb. But these linear lines actually present, present the male geometrical forms of existence. And from these linear lines of light, a sphere is formed. And this sphere is actually your ovum. But it's energetically atop of that is actually a sphere of consciousness. And it's, you know, you can think of it as a circle or a sphere. And from that, I want you to look at the, um, look at, look at the consistency of the space on the sphere. And I want you to see if it's solid, if it's buoyant, like a trampoline, just note what you see. If it's, you know, going to chip, does it move in an egg shape? What does your sphere look like? Because that's how, that's the consciousness of your body and noted in your mind. So now this sphere is lit up with light. And when light arrives on the sphere, the consciousness moves in. So now you have consciousness in the ovum of your body upon conception. And in your mind's eye, I want you to begin to separate this ovum. It begins to separate from itself. And it creates a figure called the Vesica Pisces, which is, which is a three-dimensional shape within itself and also the primary shape of the male and female. And it is perfectly mathematical, symmetrical, and within it is a specific eye. So the middle part of, of this is like an eye of a needle. Can you see that now? Mm -hmm. And when this happens, there's going, there may appear two different scents, smelling, so the scents. What are the two scents that come to mind when you see the Vesica Pisces form? And note them in your mind. Okay. So they may be, you know, uh, green apple. They may be cherry blossoms. They may be gardenias, lilacs. Um. It, the list goes on, but it's your specific frequency, which will create the scent, the sense also within 
you know, the development of your consciousness as this child is forming. So note those two cents. And then I want you to watch as more as, as the consciousness moves to the center of the circle, it will create more spheres and they start to twirl out in time and space, slowly creating the flower of life. And you're still working within the energetics of your womb center. And as the flower of life is spinning out, I want you to imagine that the goddess is above you and she's dropping down droplets from, you know, her beaker. Mm -hmm. And in these droplets are the tastes of, of that you're holding within your DNA and frequency at this moment in time. So it may be mostly sour. It may be mostly sweet. It may be salty. It may not have any taste at all, but it's like she can drop it on this, on this flower of life all, you know, as the, as it unfolds like a petals, I want you to think the first taste that comes to mind that represents who you are now at this moment in time. Okay. And keep it in your minds. So now the flower of life is formed. And according to sacred geometry, the flower of life will actually have two circles around it if when it is complete, which is actually the shape of the ovum. So now that the flower of life has occurred within your ovum, consciousness is now present within your body. And from this, the cells begin to replicate to create the fetus. One cell turns to two, two turns to four, and so on and so on, creating um, sacred geometry of the cube, of the tetrahedron, of which is a, a double pyramid shape. And from this, all of the platonic solids are created, which are connected to the earth, air, fire, water, and ether. I want you to start by watching the, the cube form, which is just the four cells, which are the four basic cells of your existence right now. And I want you to look at the cube. Is it ethereal looking? Can you slightly see through it or is it very solid? First answer that comes to mind. Okay. And then I want you to watch how this almost blob of energy of the fetus begins to manipulate inside of you so that, it, you know, the pyramids are form forming. I mean, if you don't know sacred geometry, it just begins to form all the basic geometries of nature, which that's the, as far as we're going to go for now, but I want you to see how as the two pyramids are formed or the triangles, how it is the Trinity within you and the pyramid shape and the Trinity within you is the mind, body, spirit connection. And also the pyramid shape is a connection of ascension consciousness or actually being able to move to higher realms. I want you to just plant within your body now that the platonic solids are a representation of the earth and, you know, of the fire energy, of the water energy, of the amount of air, ether, and um, these elements that you hold within you that create the, the type of child you're going to bring onto this planet. So in this moment in time of conception, all of these elements of your physical, mental, emotional existence matter. So I want you to sit up now and we're going to go over the different yeah. concepts that you found. Okay. I up. Oh. Uh. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So was that helpful? Yeah, that was, that was really, at first, when we started, and when, um, you know, we said the beams of light moving in six, six different directions are moving through you. I just had my hands <clears throat> just like on my chest and my, um, on my womb, just like kind of resting. But I felt a sense of just um, not like heat, but like very... Um, like a flow of just warm kind of energy throughout. Mm -hmm. 
you know, kind of like flowing through the top to the bottom, Mm -hmm. covering my entire like body. Mm -hmm. But no, that was really good. So just so you know, I received that in a vision and then I received a book. And what I found that to be is actually the ancient ways the Egyptians would bring in children. Wow. So it wouldn't actually hurt for you. This is by an intuition to start to actually see that in your mind's eye as you're trying to become pregnant. Okay. So watch as consciousness moves in your body, you know, and so we'll go over what you got from the senses yeah. because what the sense is, what I'm understanding is the senses actually create the vibration of the child. So whatever senses you're having in that moment and whatever physical experience you're in is, is the basic of the basis of the DNA. Wow. So my sense were two different senses. So the first one that came in is more of, um, is there, it wasn't like, a, I don't know if it was a particular flower, but it was like more of um, like a gardenia, hydrania, like pinks, like big, very flowerful, um, you know, very like, just like right now with like spring, just, you know, kind really of like high scents, like really very fruity high. scents. It sounds yeah, like very fruity, very okay. fruity and flowery. The second one was like really sweet, like a vanilla, but like, but like, I've never smelled like this vanilla. It was just like a sweeter, maybe there was more into it, but there was just like a really like, you know, it was actually like a very sweet and soft smell. You write these down because, you know, if let's say you were to get pregnant, it would be really curious if that's the d- demeanor of the child. Right. And in the sense, you know, or the memories, it would be, I mean, it, I don't know, but why not? Right. So well, what did the light look like when it came in through your window? My light, well, there was two different stages. First, it started coming in like a shimmering. Mm-hmm. Then it started getting solid, like very bright, solid. Okay. That's what I kind of, um, that's what, you know, kind of was going through me. And then as the, um, like the building blocks of the cells, I saw solid. You saw solid. Okay. And then what about for, um, if you could feel the light coming, so let's go through each of the sense. So you, you, the, uh, it looked, it appeared to be, was it a color at all or was it white? It was white. Okay. So this is what you'd want to work. So we need to, we need to actually write this down because this is what you're going to work with. Or not, yeah. I'll remember it for you now. Okay. okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, write it down right after we get off. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, just right when we hang up, just go write it down. Cause we're going to fully discuss it and get into it. And then you can write the notes down. So okay. you, so it was a shimmery light that came in and then it got closer to you and it became clouded. And if you could have put your fingers through it, what would be the texture of the light? Um, I, it was, it was like fluffy, soft, fluffy and soft. Okay. And then if it was, t- if you could taste it or if it, we could smell it, it would be a fruity flower and yeah. it would be a, um, a vanilla. Yeah. Okay. So a combination of fruit and vanilla, like a fruit of vibrant flower. I, I can kind of smell it. It would be like that peat, that pink colored candle that you yeah. get from the, those people. Right. Sold everywhere. Your country people. Then your taste, what was the taste? The taste was honey. Okay. Sweet. And then your square, your cube, what was the look of it? Um, solid. Okay. Was it at all? Was it ever clear? At, like at first. At first, and then it went solid. And then I, as the building block started, I, I you know, it started as a solid. Okay. So what I believe this meditation to be is my, so when I did it, when, when they did it, when this occurred to me, mm-hmm. my experience was different. So I thought, well, maybe, you know, when I, when it came through to me, I was like, well, maybe this is what it's supposed to look for everybody. And then I realized, no, everybody's going to have a different experience. And this is what is the first sensations that are within you. And actually it's a test to see where you are on your frequency, on your vibrational level. And there's more to it and I will break it down more. So 
it doesn't mean it's good or bad. Right. It just is a base point. Right. And I find it really interesting because one of my children, for example, and and it also goes into the Ayurvedics of, you know, are you salty? Are you, are you, is your fire, water, air, is it all balanced? And that's part of the platonic solids and balancing all those before. So there's a lot of this goes back to the ancient yogis who really, really understood that. Right. But my child, I mean, I'm, I'm still breaking down what this will mean and this will be part of the book. Okay. But my child, I, I know like one of my children, when I was pregnant with her, she only, wa- I only wanted sweets. Another one, I only wanted salt. So right. if I would have done this meditation before, I would be curious if that's what I would have seen right. at the, before the time of conception, because it's, it, and it doesn't mean that it'll always stay the same for you. If you right. were to work with, you know, if we were to work more and 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 clear you, it would, it would change the frequency of your vibration. And what was the sound you heard? That's very important. What was the sound? More like of an ohm. Okay. So all of these things create the frequency, which is the basics of, I believe, the basics of the geometry, right? That the, the create the DNA. So we know that DNA is created out of, I mean, this is really, you know, metaphysical and spiritual, but DNA is created out of sacred geometry, mathematics, and a sound vibration. Yeah. And so at the time of conception, I think all of these frequencies create the child. And so whatever the mom is, so, you know, not all moms are going to smell sweet. Some some are going to have a pugent smell at that moment. And you might, I mean, if you're, I mean, you'd want to think that you're like smelling like gardenias, but you may not. (laughs) Right. And so, and also what's very clear to me is the clearer and the more ethereal, the, the four basic cells Mm-hmm. the more ethereal the type of child you will attract. Mm. So, and I will, I'm going to look into it more and see what they say about it. But mm-hmm. is, is so, and it's also been verified within other books on sacred geometry. Those four cells that begin are actually what creates your entire body. And they can actually be found in the perineum area still. Wow. So those are the four original cells that never change. And so every seven years you have an entire new body, but those four original cells that I just took you through. So this is what they were showing me in a meditation that's now being confirmed in a book is those four original cells is actually the basics of all the other cells in your entire body. And they're found between the perineum of everyone's body. Wow. So that's the vibration. That's the, the, the vibration, which is actually in your earth chakra. And it's the vibration of your physical body, which will create the physical body of the child. The triangle is the vibration of the mind, body, spirit. So actually how clear your mind and thoughts are. And the circle is the vibration of your spirit. So when you saw the, the, um, when I said, look at the, the, the texture of the ovum and when when the light hit it and consciousness entered, what did that look like? What did the, the texture of the ovum look like? So mine was more of the same, like, wasn't like a, like, um, was a solid, but like, not like a true solid. It was more of a bounce. Did it, did it? it, Yeah. yeah. Okay. I had more, um, it wasn't just like in one circle. It was more, it wasn't, I don't want to say, I don't know, like pulsating, vibrate, like, I don't know. It was a pulsating, vibrating consciousness and then it formed and then you saw the light up. So that's the, that's when consciousness, I believe when consciousness enters and then it starts to separate into the flower of life. So this is the process explained by other people, which you can actually go and purchase a book called the ancient secret of flower of life. And it won't be the same, but he discusses, I just found out all of this is in here in a different way. Right. And that's when consciousness enters. So that that, so the, you know, the frequency of spirit within you, I believe will create that vibration of, you know, attract that type of um, soul into your body at the time of conception. Uh Does this, do you have any questions? Was this helpful? Yeah, no, it's really helpful. And it, it, you know, I don't really have questions, but it makes sense. It does make sense. 
I'm learning how to break it down to make it really, really practical. But this is the first time I've explained it like that. No, it made a lot of sense. Yeah. So yeah. write those things down. Okay. And, if, and I, I believe, so let's say if somebody's out there doing this and you had the smell of, you know, let's barf or like something really terrible come through and pugent. Yeah. You have to look in yourself and find out where that is. And so, you know, what, where does that smell come from or why is if the, some people may not have any, you know, their cube may be completely dense and really heavy. And also, you know, if they were to put the cube in their mind's eye and hold it in their hand, it may be really heavy, like a physical, you know, weight. And what that is, is all of the generational patterns and the physical body. So our, 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 just like you were saying, we're going to go back to the beginning. You're releasing generational patterns. And as a result, you're changing your cells yep. and you're having easier periods. It's proof in the pudding, right? right? So what the work does before conception is you're actually lightening your physical body, which is represented by the cubic, by the cubic geometrical shape, which okay. is happening at conception. Uh-huh. Too much? Is this over your head? No, no, it's not too much at all. Makes- so when you take the 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 three basic shapes of of reproduction or replication of cells in the fetus, which is the the cube, the the pyramid, and the sphere, all yeah. of those are connected. The cube is connected to the physical body. The sphere is connected to the spirit, and the and the pyramid is connected to the mind. And right. so by purifying the three of those together, you create a more pure child. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's like, that's my next book called fertile. That's amazing. But you can until our next session, it may come up. It wouldn't surprise me if they start to, you know, give you information on it or, mm-hmm you know, you start to see cubes, but that's what basic geometry is. And understanding that before conception is really important because it would make you mentally understand what you're actually creating vibrational wise. So if you wanted to clear the physical body more, you'd see my, oh, my, my cube was really, really heavy. I'm not eating the right food because that's creating my physical body. Perhaps right. I have more memories and pain in my pain body that needs to be cleared. So the more ethereal, ether, ethereal you are, which is like angelic and clear and, yep. and you can see that in people's skin, you know, when you see somebody goes on a cleanse or they just yeah. look like they do a lot of yoga, their physical body is clearing out. Right. Right. Uh-huh. And so that's why it's important at the time of conception to have these things, three things clear, because you're going to create that sacred geometry in the child. Right, right, right. Um, Do you have any questions? No, no, no. It's funny because somebody just said to me yesterday, they're like, because I'm going on vacation, obviously Thursday, but, um, you know, the, the one girl at work, she's like, you have this, like, you know, um, it's funny. She's like, you have this uh, vacation glow on you already. Like, I can see that you're already like checked out. And I was like, in my mind, I'm like, not really, but I'm like, yeah, I guess. You're just you working know. on yourself. Right. I was like, I guess, yeah, I'm on vacation. But she's like, yeah, your skin's like glowing. I was like, I was like, yeah, you know, maybe. I was like, I haven't really done anything to right. it. I haven't like, you know, did a facial or a cleanse, but like, you know, but uh, obviously all this stuff, like, I don't really tell people at work you know, what's going on, but you can't No, They'd be like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. (laughs) Um, but you know, it's just, it's, it just, every time you, we meet and then like what happens and then like what's happened, you know, I feel like it all starts placing, like it all makes sense at this point. And I'm like, my God, all this is like aligning to, you know, we talked about it or we're talking about it or it's happening. Yeah. Um, So that's how it works. Yeah. Crazy. So let that sink in. Okay. Um, let me know if you have any questions. Yes, I will. And if you're listening, um, you can head over to mysticalmotherhood.com and everything's there. You can listen to the podcast. You can watch videos. You can read. You can contact me. You can work with me. You can ask me questions. Everything's at mysticalmotherhood.com. If you liked this, please subscribe and tell a friend because it's really helpful. Thank you.